Welcome back. If you're following along with the series, playlist in the cards now. We've just defeated Nibble Snarf in the quest Sand Table Manners. And, well, today's the day. We're going after the flagship of Portable Third, the guy on the cover of the game, Zenogre. The cocky wolf boy with mega fleas. I'll mention here that one of the requirements to unlock Dancing Fire and Lightning to unlock a feline attack drink upgrade is to hunt three Zenogres. You should do that now so you don't forget. Once we've cleared this quest, we'll have access to our next hot spring quest, Steam and Clouds, which has us fighting a great Roggy and Volvodon in the nighttime volcano to permanently upgrade the hot spring with plus 10 health. We'll be doing that immediately after clearing this Sonogre quest as it's too useful to pass up. There's also a pretty tough quest later on called Monsters in the Secret Spring that has you hunt an Ojuros, Rathian, and Zenogre to unlock the final permanent plus 10 health upgrade for the hot spring. Like with the quest I mentioned in the Nipple Snarf video, this should unlock at the end of the village quest line, but it's good to keep in mind for later. For a weapon choice, I'll be using Bleeding Cross, the Giganox Longsword. You can use Orion Blade instead and you'll be about as effective. I'm mostly using this one because it works for me, and I wanted to change things up a little and recommend a status weapon. To be honest, I don't use poison weapons basically ever, and it surprised me how comparable it was to the Ice Longsword I was using, though that could just be coincidental. Zenogre is a very tough fight, as one might imagine the flagship to be. He's very aggressive and fast, and will hit harder than anything we've fought so far. In fact, I'd say it's as good a time as any other to start using Mega Potions. I recommend you start bringing 10 Mega Potions and 10 Normal Potions along with your Whetstones or Ammo for this quest, and every quest following this one. Also, if you haven't yet, buy the Power and Armor Charms from the shop. It'll cost 60,000 Zenny in total, but they're permanent, and we'll always be bringing them along. I won't include it in my hunt today, but I will be for every quest after this one sell monster parts that you don't need if you're short on cash. Zenogu is pretty unique for the series, and is a fan favorite. Along with monsters like Narcacuda and Tigrex, we'll be seeing them a lot throughout the games. As you might already be aware, Zenogu has many thunder attacks, but these attacks don't really come from Zenogu. They come from the Thunderbugs. Zenogu's body has parts that can conduct and produce static electricity, which gets stored in his fur. But he still has a hard time generating energy, and can't use the thunder element on his own. The Thunderbugs that Zenogu uses become charged by him, turning them into Fulgur Bugs, and they then provide extra charge to power Zenogre's more dangerous attacks, and in fact will improve his physical abilities as well, making him faster and stronger, and preventing him from tiring out. When he's fully charged like this, he also becomes more vulnerable, and hitting him enough times can disrupt his charge, causing the Fulgur Bugs to get knocked loose and flee the area. If he ever gets knocked down, you can actually use a bug net on his back to capture some Fulgur Bugs, which will also reduce his charge by a bit.
If this is your first time hunting Zenogre, go to Area 7 in the cutscene we'll play. You will also start the quest charged up, otherwise go to Area 5. Our main goal of this fight is to hit his head and maintain yellow or red spirit cage. To be fair though, besides the tip of his tail, you can sort of hit him anywhere. His back legs are a good target since you can topple him. The main thing that will help us is learning how to be aggressive. If you're aggressive without thinking, you'll just end up on the ground. You've gotta have a plan. For the sake of the guide, I won't be rolling through any attacks, but I encourage you to try it out if you'd like. It can make the fight a lot more fun. I'd recommend you start out with some evasion gear, like the Legombi set. Then work your way from evasion plus 2 to evasion plus 1, then finally try rolling through attacks with no evasion skill at all. While it's not a 100% guarantee, you should more or less assume that he will charge up after running past you like he just did. It's a good opening, and you should try to interrupt him. When not charged, you can hit his head from his left side after the Thunderball move. When he is charged, you can hit his head from the right side after the second group of projectiles. This is his second time charging up in his first encounter. If I know he won't charge up fully, I like to use this time to upgrade my spirit gauge. Notice how I'm using very low commitment attacks until I'm sure I can use a longer combo. This is our first encounter, and this is the third time he's charging up, so he should finish now. Hopefully you noticed what I did. Being deliberate is important. I positioned far enough away to avoid his AoE from being fully charged, and I went through the spirit combo to reach the spirit round slash. Do what you can to avoid being hit. Remember, you need to hit them like a hundred times. They only need to hit you like three or four times. Now that he's charged up, he'll be a lot more aggressive. So I'll want to use even less commitment moves and combos, always ready to evade a quick attack. Attacks like the headbutt combo. That's unfortunate. I took a risk to refill my red gauge. I'd say it was worth it. I'm still not terribly good with that attack to be honest. The paths of the projectiles can be confusing, even if they're the same each time. He's doing his headbutt combo again. He'll always have downtime after finishing these moves. I just knocked him out of his charge state, so now we revert back to the loop of him trying to find moments to charge back up. Some other moves are different as well, like his thunderballs and the posse moves. After some of his moves, he'll linger in place for a moment. Knowing where his body parts will end up will allow you to follow up on this downtime. Notice he didn't start charging there. I'm not terribly sure if there's a tell for if he will or won't, so you'll want to be careful. Low commitment until you're sure. Since this is his second charge up, I'll assume he's going to charge up twice before being fully charged. Even if he won't, I just want to be safe. If he doesn't charge in a second time, then I'll know it'll be his third time for sure. I interrupted that one, so I'll assume the next time he charges up, he'll be fully charged by the end of it. I'm pretty sure he'll always do the howl two times every time, so you at least have some time to get away. For this hunt this early in the game, sharpness might be a bit of an issue. I plan to use the next time he charges as an opening to sharpen.
There's an opening after that. It was an add-on march. Your health going up is more important than their health going down. Since I have sharpness trouble so much in this hunt, every time he leaves the area, I'll sharpen just in case. To save yourself some headache and heartbreak, make sure to take out the annoying small monsters first. Keep your eye on the large monster and look for an opening to take out the small ones. Zenogar is now supercharged. He'll have access to his backflop attack. There it is. Subtle, but I got a bit too close to that Bullfango. I made sure my camera moved far enough to see it to see if he was aggroed on me and started charging. He's not supercharged anymore. No more backflow. Not charged, no more triple pound. He'll start to try charging. He's exhausted. It's a good time to use a pitfall trap now. It'll last longer. He's eating. Let's go. With a cut tail, his tail flip attack will have less range. Now that he's weaker, he'll charge up faster. And I'm pretty sure if he ever charges three times in a row, he'll be charged up at the end of it. This time I opened up my quest details to help with timing out Zenogar going to sleep. I waited about 15 seconds. If you didn't use the supply pitfall trap yet, this is a good time to. Since the pitfall trap takes time to fully deploy, you can plant it and start attacking him. He'll start to get up but will get caught before being able to attack.
That move can have quite a bit of range to it. Zenoko is the monster of Portable 3rd. This is meant to be as much of a challenge as it is a hurdle. Give him a bit of respect and take your time, and you'll come out on top. To make either of the Zenogar armor sets, this is what you'll need. When carving Zenogar, you can get Zenogar shells, Zen electro fur, Zenogar shockers, Zenogar claws, and Zenogar plates. When carving his tail, you can get Zenogar tail, Zenogar shell, Zen electro fur, and Zenogar plates. When breaking his claws, you can get Zenogar Claw, two Zenogar Claws, or Zenogar Shock. When breaking both of his horns, you can get Zenogar Horn, Zenogar Shell, or Zenogar Plate. When picking up a shiny, you can get Wyvern Tears, Fulgur Bugs, Zenogar Shells, and Zenogar Plates. When Zenogar is toppled and you gather from his back with a bug net, you can get Fulgur Bugs, or Zen Electro Fur. And finally, when capturing Zenogre, you can get Zen Electro Fur, Zenogre Shockers, Zenogre Claws, two Zenogre Shells, two Vulgar Bugs, or Zenogre Plate. Bulldrum hides are from, of course, Bulldrum, and Thunder Bugs can be gathered from most bug net spots. From the Insect Trapper, you'll want to use the white High Bug Perfume. It has the highest chance to get them at 15%. Remember to use Honey or Pollen if you have it. A few runs through the Misty Peaks and you should have enough. By default, the Zenogar Blademaster armor gives you Thunder Attack plus one, Latent Power plus one, Razor Sharp, and the negative skill Taunt. Thunder Attack plus one is the same as any other elemental damage boosting skill. It will increase your elemental damage, if there is any, by 10%. In this case, the Thunder Element. Razor Sharp, quote, halves the rate at which a weapon loses sharpness, making it so your melee weapons will lose their sharpness slower than normal. This might not sound too valuable since you can always sharpen your weapon when it gets dull, but believe me, the skill is pretty nice, if only for the quality of life of not having to sharpen as often. Less downtime means more damage per second. Taunt is a multiplayer skill. It may affect how often a monster targets you rather than your felines, but from some very short testing, it seems to have either very little or no effect on it. Either way, not terribly worth consideration. And that leaves us with a latent power, or gloves off. A skill that Monster Hunter has never been able to describe properly for some reason. It always says something like, when certain conditions are met, without actually saying what those conditions are. Even in both World and Rise, while it explains what the skill does when active, it just says, when certain conditions are met. I really don't understand why they always do this. Anyway, small rant aside, the skill, when activated, will increase affinity and reduce stamina consumption for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Level 1 is 30% affinity and halved stamina usage, while level 2 is 50% affinity with quartered stamina usage. That much extra affinity is pretty awesome, averaging out to about 7.5% extra damage at level 1, and 12.5% extra damage at level 2. Unfortunately, it only lasts for 90 seconds. So how the hell do we actually use this skill? Well, it activates after 5 minutes of being near a monster that has seen you. Alternatively, it can activate sooner by taking around 180 damage. When it's active, your arm glows blue. With that information, this makes the skill a little less appealing, though, to be honest, it's still quite good, if unreliable. Maybe this is why they never explain how the skill is activated. So what's the deal? Is this armor good or not? To be honest, funnily enough, the main skill I like from this set is Razor Sharp. While Latent Power maybe isn't the most impactful skill ever made, it's absolutely not useless. And since it comes with the armor, it's kinda like a bonus. The Thunder Attack skill is nice too. Taunt isn't worth worrying about. This set isn't groundbreaking by any means, but it'll serve you well if you choose to pick it up. And I do recommend you get this set, since it's from the game's flagship monster. You might as well. It has a decent defense stat as well, but it's weak to ice, water, and fire in that order, so it could be worth considering. 
The set has six slots, seven if you make one of his weapons to go along with it, except for Heavy Bowgun for some reason. With five slots you can get Speed Sharpening. Razor Sharp and Speed Sharpening together will practically solve any Sharpness trouble, and because Sharpness is important when considering your damage output, that's a good thing. Alternatively, you can add in five Throttle Jewels to get Latent Power plus two if you want to further increase the benefit from that skill, but you'll have to fight Barry off first. Fortunately, you can fight Barry right after clearing the Zenogre class. There's a handful of other one-slot decorations with two points you can choose from, but I'd go with Speed Sharpening using five Grinder Jewels. The Gunner Armor by default has the same skills and is more or less the same as the Blademaster one, except, instead of Razor Sharp, it has Normal Slash Wrap It Up. This is a pretty great skill because it's a percentage increase, but the choice for this armor will be the same as the Blademaster one. For the Gunner Armor specifically, it's good for bowguns that focus on normal shots and on bows that focus on firing rapid shots. Additionally, with its 6 or 7 open slots, you can get Combo Plus, otherwise known as Bullet Limit, from 5 Factory Jewels. This will guarantee your combinations will give you the maximum amount per craft. While you can bring combo books to increase your combination chance, you can't bring any items to give you the max amount per combination. And while it's not always necessary, it's nice to have the consistency of knowing how much ammo you have, instead of letting RNGs just take the wheel. That's all I have to say about the armor. Just like with the Blade Master set, I recommend you pick this one up simply because it's the main monster of the game. The elemental resistances of gunner armor are higher than the Blade Master ones, though they have less physical defense in general. For the Gunner Armor, it's only slightly weak to ice and water, and has 25 in thunder resistance. Pretty good as far as elements go. After the hunt, you get a fun cutscene of the village. If you're playing with no music, you won't be able to hear anything, but you can rewatch the cutscene in your room at the magazine stand. Actually, you can rewatch any of the cutscenes here, including monster intros. Talking to the village chief, she says she's glad we make it back and praises us, etc., and gives us three Yukimo tickets. She also says the blacksmith is offering new weapons, and to pay him a visit, and that several new requests have come in. This is the end of our primary goal, to defeat Zenogre, but the game is far from over. The blacksmith says the whole village is talking about our victory, and that he thought defeating Zenogre was impossible. He gives us five Sunspire Jewels as a reward for our hard work, mentioning that we can use these to make higher quality decorations with more skill points than the ones before. He says we can find Sunspire Jewels for mining in places like the Tundra and Volcano, that those areas tend to be the best when it comes to rare ores. The item shop lady says that ever since Zenogre was defeated, more people have been coming to the village again. And as more visitors come, so too do new suppliers. So now she can offer new items, such as the Book of Compass 4. Buy this as soon as you can. She also carries some types of level 2 ammo, which will be very convenient for gunners. The hunter's store in the guild hall up the stairs also updates her stock. Speaking of which, if you haven't yet, you need to get the power and armor charm. I said before that they were available at the start of 4 star, after defeating Rathian, that I'd wait until we get to 5-star to use them. Well, we're gonna start using them now. Like I said then, if you're short on money, sell some monster parts that you're not using. You should definitely have enough by now. If not, do some hunts of a monster you're comfortable with for some quick cash, and pick them up immediately. They're almost always going to be in our inventory starting now. Finally, the farm manager asks how the farm's been treating us, and tells us that we can now exchange Yukimo points for armor sphere pluses, though they're really expensive at 3,000 each. You can also buy Sunspire Jewels for 3500 if you're short on some and don't want to go mining for them. And if you didn't know, you could also have bought Armor Spheres and Aqua Glow Jewels from him for 800 and 500 Yukimo points respectively. Being honest, I don't think I've ever bought items like this before, even in 3D Mini Night. The cost of them just seems so insanely high that it never feels worth it. Though, I suppose that's to encourage us to go mining for them, since we can acquire them that way too. Now that we've beaten Zenogre, we can also unlock the Bug Tree Seesaw, the Improved Beehive, and the log guarding and wood chopping regimes to train for higher defense and attack respectively. You should definitely get the beehive and seesaw when you're able to. The comrade blacksmith also has some things to say, but unfortunately, as far as my patch goes, this dialogue isn't translated, so I don't know what he says. Probably that there are new feline comrade equipments that he can make. That's all I have to say about this hunt. You've done great to come this far. Consider farming for his gear, if only to have it as sort of a trophy. It is one of the main monsters of Portable Third, after all. We're now in Five Star Village, and we'll be fighting a new group of monsters here. They are Narkakuga, Baryoth, Oregon, and Rathalos. Keep it up. You're doing great. Until next time.